Welcome to a World of Tanks replay. My name is Maxwell, and today's replay was sent in by the user L Street Gatto, and he's driving the IS-3 on a standard battle on the fjords. So this is the first replay that I'm going to be commentating after the Tank Fest event, and let me tell you, it was absolutely amazing. I don't want to talk too much about Tank Fest in this replay, just because I'm going to have a slew of content coming out for that, hopefully anyway. First day that I was there, I was a little bit overwhelmed and just completely derped and forgot to really take any photographs or much footage at all. Most of the time was spent wandering around, talking to people, uh, signing things, shaking hands and uh, receiving gifts. So, yeah, first day kind of just derped out a little bit and forgot to do anything. But the second day I got plenty of, uh, plenty of videos and photographs, so hopefully going to have a bit of content coming out for that. You may have seen on the channel that we had a QA and a session with the CEO of Wargaming, Victor. Very, very funny man, very insightful. If you want to know about the future of World of Tanks, it may be a good idea to watch that because he gave some good insights. He also gave some great answers to some other questions about the game and Wargaming in general. So things all the way from uh, World of Warplanes about why it hasn't really worked out so well and possible future plans for different game modes in World of Tanks. If you want to get a sneak preview of that, I would definitely go and check out that video and have a watch of it. So, yeah, I think that's about, about all I'm going to talk about Tank Fest for now, because like I said, there are going to be videos coming out for it. I just want to talk about this replay for a little while. So, L Street decided to head down the bottom, and on the fjords, that's pretty much par for the course. The heavy tanks come to the bottom here. They use their superior armor to try and soak up the damage of the enemy while dishing out damage gonna try and break through the other person's lines and then advance forward you can see L Street doing exactly that right now hasn't taken any damage bounced a couple of hits and landed a couple of hits himself but this is really just about patience the team that tends to lose here is the one that gets a too antsy too quickly and advances forwards into a terrible situation so the the longer you can play it cool the longer you can have patience for the better you can generally do L Street made a little bit of a mistake there, backing out a little bit too early, possibly thought that the enemy tank was going to hang around for a little bit longer than he was. Unfortunately, as you saw, he backed off as soon as he fired, and L Street's gun wasn't quite ready. You can see he's just kind of sitting here and just taking the hit, none of them doing any actual hit point damage. A couple of T-34s in front of him now going to be moving forward. And that's the, the thing about playing in this position is you have to know when it's time to move. And taking out a couple of the enemy tanks here means that the enemy is going to be a lot less likely to start poking around the corner. Which is why that first T-34 started to move and L Street's going to come and back him up. I'm going to plant one straight in the front of that VKA. So yeah, knowing when to move forward is definitely... A, a skill acquired over a little bit of time. So obviously if he just sat around the back there, this T-34 would be all by himself and uh, possibly could find himself in a difficult situation. But not just that, not just sort of the altruism of wanting to help out your teammates, but back there, L Street wouldn't have been able to do any damage at all either. So uh, his score would have sucked at the end of this battle. As you saw, the, uh, the allied T-34 that sat in the back hasn't done anything yet, really. He's just kind of stuck there. Now, in fact, he's getting shot in the rear by a super Pershing. L Street's got to make a difficult decision, but I think the decision was made easier for him by the fact that the VK is backing off and the IS-3 is well entrenched, whereas the guys coming in from the rear are pushing forward and are attacking. So, it's going to be a, really, a pretty easy choice to spin around and try and deal with these guys first. We're trying to land a shot on this T-29 as he's focusing on the T-34. But he gets obliterated by an orbital bombardment there. You see an SU-152 already appearing as well. L Street pokes himself out in a great side scraping position. And you see he just turned that damage aside. He's a good five minutes into this game and hasn't taken any hit point damage whatsoever yet. So you can see he's playing very, very well indeed. Lands a great shot on the SU-152. He's wanting none of this now. He's realised he's made a terrible mistake. And he's trying to back off. He has a shot and hits the rock there. There's no way he's going to be able to get back in time. And that's L Street's second kill. T-34 still holding his own. Behind him there. Fighting back to back at the moment. Not quite sure how many hit points the T-34 has. Takes another bit of tracking damage. 
but he should now be able to take out this Super Pershing fairly easily. We're going to have a quick look at the T-34. He's actually pretty low on hit points, and he gets taken out uh, by the VKA there. That just leaves L Street to square off against these two guys. Super Pershing did get taken out by the artillery. So he doesn't have to worry about him. Just has to take out this V kit, which he should be able to do fairly easily. There we go. He starts taking a bit of damage now. But uh, this game has progressed along nicely. Map is a little bit confusing at the moment. The Allies have kind of got people on the far right. And the enemy's got people only on the far left and in the north. Looks like there's a huge dead zone in the center of the map. So L Street going to spin himself around decide what to do next. It's always good at this point to take a look at the scoreboard. And because they're losing by one kill, has a thing to himself that they're probably going to be on the attack. So the best idea is probably to head back to base. When the enemy team thinks that they've got an advantage, or thinks that they can press an advantage, they generally come on the attack. So winning by one kill. Obviously, if the enemy team was losing, there's probably, unless they felt like they had the advantage, there's almost no way that they were going to press an attack, and they'd probably be doing what the Allies are doing right now, which is fall back to their base. So the the momentum would be with you to go and attack their base rather than drop back and defend your own base. So you're probably both just going to sit there until the time runs out that would end up being a draw. And let's face it, nobody wants a draw. You'd rather lose than have a draw, to be honest. So KV-85 and himself linking up here. We're just going to speed this one up a little bit until we get back into the action. As this one could take some time. Just going to sit patiently. He's shown plenty of patience already in the south of the map. What is a couple more minutes to wait for the enemy team to come to you? More often than not, that is what tends to win battles in this game is the patience. Asking the KV-85 to cover the northern ridge, just in case anybody comes from that upper road. KV-85 stubbing, stubbornly ignoring the chat. T-25AT appears from the south. Hopefully nobody's going to come from the north. It's going to require both of them to try and take this guy out. As the KV-85 may not have his wits about him. Again, just going to set up patiently. But it looks like everybody's coming through the south here. Can he land a shot on the T25AT? He can't. KV85 stubbornly still sitting in his bush. L Street is going to try and push down on this WZ. Lands a great shot through his side to take his track out. But he's quick on the repair. Doesn't want to push around the corner. Because there's no point square facing off against two guns. When you can only face off against one. If there's a choice, one is better than two. In this instance, anyway. T25 has fired. The IS-3 hasn't really got very good gun depression, so he's going to have to come all the way around the corner. But he's going to have to keep one eye on that WZ. As you can see, the WZ lying in wait. Takes some tracking damage from the Lorraine 155. Decides to go for the WZ, as that is a much easier kill. Takes him out. Now he's going to push forward onto the T25AT. He's going to try and rely on his turret armour to keep him alive, which it does indeed. He takes out the T25 AT. There is a, an ARL V39 pushing in, but hoping to use the corpse of the T25 AT to keep him alive, which indeed it does. He manages to manoeuvre himself around. The ARL can only hit the top of his turret, and that one didn't go through again. Should be a simple case of one shot, one kill. And that's a well-deserved Top Gun medal. And that was almost all she wrote for L Street Gatos. The artillery reined in there. But it looks like not quite. Took about half his hit points and his track off. But he survived. And he survived again to fight another day. There's three and a half minutes left on the clock. They've got to find the FV-207 and the Lorraine 155. And they're just going to head, make a beeline straight for the enemy base. Hopefully, they will have turned tail and ran. I don't think they'll have gone all the way south. So, the M4043 is coming through the centre. The FA is going around the top. Somehow, one of them gets into the base. Maybe they weren't in that area at all. Maybe they were pushing in from the north. 
There we go. Takes out the Lorraine now. Just got the FV207 to contend with. Hopefully he's going to be in and around the cap circle. If he's not, hopefully the two of them will have enough time to complete the base capture. Moving in now on the base. 1 minute and 15 on the clock. It will require both of them to complete the base capture if he's not here. But he is here. You can see him in the distance there. He's almost certainly reloaded. Taking his time to let that one close in. But... L Street Gatto gets him first, and that is kill number seven, and a well-deserved victory. So awesome game played there by L Street Gatto, picking himself up seven kills, four and a half thousand points of damage, and really doing his job as a heavy tank in the south there, before coming back to mop up the rest of the enemy team. So awesome game from you, thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget guys, if you've got yourself a great replay, then send that into replay at screenreality.com, the link for that's in the description. Just attach the replay file itself or the link to the What Replay website to the email and I can check that one out for you. And don't forget if you enjoyed this video, you found it useful, informative, you learned something or you just thought it was fun, think about hitting that subscribe button because there's a lot more World of Tanks content on this channel. I've been Maxwell, this bit of World of Tanks replay and I'll catch you guys next time.